again. Thank you again very much. Uh, well, the, this, um, Mr. von Kartenhusen. And now we have as next speaker Dr. Francoise Roux. She is economist and uh, working very high up for the French Ministry of Economics. And in addition, she is the chair of the OECD Working Party on Nanotechnology Policy. Uh, thank you. OECD stands for the Organization for Cooperation and Economic Development, for those who would like to know. So Ireland, around 40 years ago, taught me my first lessons in navigation. So as I spent one month uh, in sailing in Mulahide Bay, and uh, not far from this campus, I think. And now this, uh, the challenge for me is another kind of navigation uh, between stakeholders uh, to ensure the safe and responsible development of nanotechnology. So thank you, Chair, for the kind presentation, and thank you also for the invitation. So as you see um, here, nanotechnology will be used as a buzzword, embedding nanoscience, nanotechnologies, and nanomaterial. Um, I have the opportunity to talk about my country today. So France is on the forefront of a legal framework for nano safety, and this doesn't come from scratch. Uh, as a precautionary principle um, is uh, inside the French constitution and leads to a kind of harmonious co-evolution of science and, so and technology in my country. So, as you may know, France has been involved in the creation of the conditions of a responsible development of nanoscience and nanotechnology since more than 10 years by active participation to European, international, intergovernmental, and non-governmental dialogues and also formal activities. Those dialogues have covered a wide range of concerns, bearing in mind the fact that no market and no, bene uh, no benefits could be reached but with a full understanding of the relevant mechanisms of demand in a situation of uncertainties and growing complexity as well as of investment and supply. Duty to care in order to protect has been high in the political agenda for the tremendous changes potentially induced by nanoscience and nanotechnologies go far beyond the chemical specific properties of some passive materials at the nanoscale and cover nowadays a whole range of DNA and bio-inspired hybrid advanced synthetic materials built upon specific properties of surface, interface, and confinement at a nanoscale. Ethical aspects as well as the will to deliver efficient novel solutions to ground challenges like the transition to a low carbon bioeconomy have been integrated early by public authorities. So the presentation today will elaborate on main questions and results provided since the beginning of the 21st century along the classical awareness, readiness, and response paths as regards nanotechnologies. So it will present the situation of the industry and services in France in a survey which has been released recently. And the last part of uh, the presentation will describe the elements of the official answer of the French government to the French independent authority in charge of the national public debate. And uh, those responses have been pre presented very recently on the 13th of February this year. So uh, we will end on the description of a mandatory reporting scheme for nanomaterials undertaken according to the French law and partially implemented in cooperation with other member states of the European Union under OECD standards. So, Let's go through to a presentation now. Um, the starting point was in about 2000, uh, 2002 and 2005. Um, and uh, within the French government, we began reviewing the capacities in fundamental and applied research for nanosciences. We had a report on ethics on that, uh, at that time. And uh, it, it led us to a first national initiative for nanosciences in 2003. Um, and uh, this initiative were about, was about enhancing the platforms and the equipment, reviewing the skills, and investing in interdisciplinary, in this interdisciplinarity. At that time, we were more concerned by industrial opportunities and uh, the integration and the commerce from business to business. 
But we began to invest in metrology, characterization, and the expression of nanomaterial specific properties. We had a special focus on intellectual property rights, but we also were concerned at that moment by the emerging patent thicket. And we also had a specific approach for security and safety application, but still demand led in regulated market. But there was not at this moment specific regulation but a generic one on industrial plants and occupational health safety, and also a generic one on consumers' protection. So nothing specific to nanotechnologies at that time. So um, in order to have an informed trust on public institutions, we, like we, we wanted to have a public policy, but what for? Let's say common good general interest, so education, for instance, but also public health, uh, we would like to ensure a level playing field between, uh, between the supply, in the supply side. We already had the long-term, very long-term issues, resiliency and accountability in mind. And uh, we also uh, participated to international dialogues addressing global changes. For instance, ch challenges, for instance, what can nanotechnologies bring to water treatment or water depollution? So its responsible development was present in the French policy at the very beginning. Um, but what do we mean by responsible development? I think that everybody uh, has the right to, to, to raise this question. Uh, if we come back to the definition given by the uh, European uh, um, officer, René von Schoenberg, it is related to research and innovation. It would be a transparent, interactive process by which societal actors and innovators become mutually responsible to each other with a view on the ethical acceptability, sustainability, and the societal desirability of the new innovation process and its marketable product. So at that moment, this uh, responsible research and innovation uh, is dealt with at the European level in an expert group and there will be soon a consultation which will come. It will not be only focused on nanotechnologies, but also on emerging technologies. So back to France, what were the challenges in France? Well, it was a problem of access to fundamental knowledge at the nanoscale for those who would like to. The problem of scaling up from labs to industrial chains, which is uh, still uh, going on. It was also a problem of lowering the cost by adopting industrial standards by consensus. Uh, we also had the, the problem of a better international specialization in order not to be an importer net, but also to contribute to international trade. And we also had in front the specificity of societal issues after techno-led long-lasting unrest. I was quoting asbestos, GMOs, long-life nuclear spent fuel. I would like to add more recently the question of shale gas, for instance. So we have a tradition in France on that. So this was very important to, since the beginning, address the question of responsibility. Well, let's take an example about responsibility. Responsibility begins with transparency and open source exchange of data. So you know there's no data, no market, which has been inspiring the European dialogue for a while on that. If you take into consideration the nanomedicine community, you see here about this question of ontology. An ontology might be a structure that organizes informed relationships between sets of data. You see here the tremendous importance to have this open source, open exchange of data because otherwise it is very difficult, you, 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 you have not enough time and you cannot integrate what comes from the science. So um, now next move, the next move was uh, the period 2005 and 2000, until 2010. So I have understood that the nano health net, nano impact net has begun in 2005. So for us also, it was a key turning point. Um, we were elaborating on the nano action plan of the European Union. We began to, to mar benchmark with major partners like Germany, for instance, but also UK, not only. Uh, we also uh, led a technology assessment, a full technology assessment. Uh, we began to improve the capacity to uh, engage lay people as well as re researchers in dialogues. It was at that moment informal and relay relying on initiatives that were spread among the French territory. And we began to see also uh, the, the um, 
systemic legal norms assessment, including the, the legal norm, the, 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 the possibility to avoid trials, to avoid legal conflicts, to avoid time and money on that. And we also began to have an active contribution to technical norms open to international consensus, and it was around the ISOTC Technical Committee 229, who added to its uh, traditional work something which, which is called the Technical Group on Consumers and Societal Dimension in Standards. Uh, we recently made um, a survey within the French Ministry of Economy, Finance and Industry on the, uh, the, the way by which the firms in France were entering the nanotechnology market. And uh, in fact, 300 firms have been reviewed in this survey who adopted the OECD standards on statistics, which already is available online if you want to, to see it. So on those 300 uh, companies, we had 52% uh, in the industry, 1% on energy, 9% uh, on commerce, and 36% on services. On those 300 firms, one on third was involved in R&D activities with uh, public-private partnerships in clusters supported by public authorities, and two, and two on, thir on three show, showed already concerns and duty to care for the environment. Uh, the next three slides will have some French elements, but I will explain. So the first one of the services is the, the, the size of the undertakings according to uh, the date of creation, and you see here that you have a lot of subsidiaries of main, uh, main firms in France, but also you have less than 10 uh, wage earners here, a lot of, a lot of uh, firms coming there. So here you may see spin-offs, and there, startups. Um, if you review the main uh, domains of activity of this survey, which is online also, you will see that the nanomaterial is very developed in France, and, uh, but also many other, nanoelectronics, nanobio, nanomedicine, nanoinstrumentation, for instance. If you go along the value chain, now the position along the value chain, you will see also uh, main areas for R&D, which is uh, compliant to what I said uh, at the very beginning. There is nano manufacturing here, and also trade, and advisory and engineering. This is how it, uh, it is shared. So if you're more interested, you can go along on the websites. So, and now what is the readiness assessment? I said it was about awareness, readiness, and then I will come back to the response, the legal one. So on the first column, you see that the annual R&D public spending in France was about 80 million euros from the period 2004 until 2010. And it has been already decided that the expected annual public funding for the years 2011, 2019 would be up to 80 million euros per year, which means that this is very high in the French priorities of research and development because we are, as you may know, in a financial and economic crisis. We are not alone, but uh, we are also. So it would have been a challenge to, uh, to maintain this effort. And this effort uh, is on nanocharacterization, simulation, design, nano health and nanomedicine platforms, interdisciplinary systems, data exchange systems, and we also have a specific program, uh, Investments of the Future on Converging Technologies as a Nanoscale, and addressing in particular the nanobio area, but also nano ICT. So if you come back to what has been implemented uh, by the French government uh, since, uh, since those, the year 2010, you have the French National Strategy for Research and Innovation, uh, the nano Innov program uh, coming back to 2008 until 2012, which will come to an end but will be reproducible in the future in other ways. Uh, we have invested in a, with the help of the European Union also on a nanomedicine platform. We do not invest enough, but this is a preoccupation on EHA stocks and ecotox programs in partnership with the EU. 
the protocol to outreach, I will come back specifically on that because we have a feedback I will develop a little bit later. And um, also, uh, we lead uh, this uh, responsible nano labeling under French leadership at ISO and SEM. Uh, now I come to the elements of response, that is to say what is going on at that moment, 2011-2013. So we see we are, we are in real time here. 17th of February, there has been a publication on the, on the 19th of February of uh, an official decree. And this decree creates a new mandatory uh, reporting scheme. But there are some missing tools, including with this reporting schemes. In particular for governments, we do not have such a thing as a normalized reporting scheme for the member states within the European Union for responsible research and innovation on NANO. For scientists, we need to update the code of conduct. For innovators, we are going to a European patent office, but this will be for 2013. So at that moment, we have, uh, we have the European patent office, which is not delivering a European patent yet, but it is in the Lisbon Treaty. And uh, for the general compliance of industry and trade, those are on voluntary schemes, applying CSR and ISO 26 guidelines at that moment, but this is of the voluntary aspects. So if we come back to the governance issues for to, uh, from 2012, we see that uh, there's official feedback to the French national public debate we had in, in the year 2010, has just been issued a couple of days ago, and it is about five points. The first is about research on fundamental knowledge, public research on risk characterization, toxicology, and ecotoxicology, including metrology, who comes first. Then the responsible development is to support the European Parliament, prevent also occupational exposure, support a, and uh, support a standard on control bending according to the danger of nanomaterials um, in labs and in the, in the industry. As the third point is about societal uh, and ethical issues. So this uh, official, uh, official feedback uh, supports uh, the science and science or, and the SHS, uh, it stands for social, social uh, sciences, contribution to responsible development. We interview the methodology to addressing systemic risks, which is something a little bit new. Uh, all main research organisms will have to create an ethical committee, in particular those who do not have one yet. And also there is an enlarged mission to the French independent authority in charge of informatics and privacy uh, for the hypertrace ability induced by spreading sensors, geolocalization and mobile applications. Now point four, answering the requirements of the civil society for information on nanoscience and nanotechnology application. Here again, you have the possibility in principle to create such a thing like a nano.gov.fr. Uh, also, um, there will be a mandatory declaration of the presence of nanoparticles. I will come back later. And the, the fifth point, point E, public outreach and public engagement. I coming here. Uh, which is a more developed, in fact, so we will have to support the dialogues and forums open to the society with a transparent approach on the goals of R&D. This was the main criticism that had been done that maybe the French public national debate was not transparent enough on the goals pursued by this debate. So, and we will have a dedicated interministerial task force that will evaluate the going, ongoing policies and review different options are for a renewed government scheme, governance scheme. Maybe I will disagree a little bit with the former speaker on that, uh, because um, um, he spoke about acceptance, but in France, we here have the opportunity to shift from acceptability to something else. Uh, it would be a governance continuum uh, for the converging technologies at the nanoscale. If you are more interested on this shift in governance, you have the possibility to see on the website the Framing Nano program of the seventh framework program. Framing Nano is a key word, and that will give you a flavor of what we mean by that. So the reporting scheme now, 
Um, the reporting scheme now uh, is to be implemented now. Um, we have a risk characterization by an independent agency, cooperation with other member states, compliance to EU and international agreements and statements, in particular this regulation is compliant to the World Trade Organization technical barriers to trade regulations, and we are also well compliant to the joint statement from the Transatlantic Economic Council of the last 29th of November. Uh, this is the good news. So uh, then, um, the reporting scheme, the implementation of this reporting scheme is for 2013 for nanomaterials produced or sold in 2012. It requires identification information that will be fixed by a ministerial order after consultation of all the stakeholders. In French, we say arrêté. And it will be a first step towards traceability, which already is mandatory for food, for instance, uh, since November last year in the European Union. It will be compatible with market expansion and innovation. And it, it, it is a contribution to an ongoing European regulation of nanomaterials, not yet adopted, but under consideration under the REACH Directive. So the next one is in French, but I just wanted to mention two things about this decree. The first is about the 100 grains. That is to say that the declaration will be mandatory uh, with a minimal quantity of 100 grains for production, import, and, and, uh, and, and, uh, and sales, which is not nothing. But um, a, a data may be declared, but not disclosed, in particular if there are industrial secrecy, uh, secrecy issues. This is the subtlety of the fact. And also the answers, what is this? The next, I'm coming to an end for my presentation. ANSES stands for Agence Nationale de Sécurité Sanitaire Alimentaire. And ANSES is a French national public agency which will be in charge of the declarations and data. It is in charge of risk characterization, including for substance at the nanoparticulate state since the last year. But ANSES is not a risk manager, and this is kind of good governance not to mix risk management and risk characterization. This year, ANSES creates on a permanent basis a working party on nanomaterials and health, food, environmental, and occupational activities. And the working group reports to an expert group focused on physical components and cooperation with all ANSES expert groups conducting activities related to nanomaterials will be ensured. So there are still missing tools and uh, initiatives. The first challenge for me is about the engineering, the capacity to conduct engineering at a nanoscale and fostering innovation at that moment. Uh, the second challenge is a legal one. We can talk about safe, safer by design or by process, but not safety in absolute meaning by design and by process. We can make progress, but. Um, there is also the safety issue in particular for synthetic biology, for do-it-yourself, do it or do-it-with-others do communities. And the convergence at the nanoscale beyond materials of first generation needs your community for Q-Nano in awareness, risk characterization, monitoring, surveillance, assessments, and control. So you're most welcome on that. And the possible responses uh, we have uh, within the uh, EU preparation of the AIDS framework program this responsible research and innovation scheme for nanoscience and nanotechnology beyond the code of conduct. We also have um, this, uh, which has been required by the European Parliament, guidance on the labeling of manufactured nano objects and products containing nano manufactured nano objects. Uh, in fact, uh, there is a change in the lead here. Uh, it will be ISO-led, but within uh, French um, leadership. That's astonishing, but this has been decided after a huge arbitrage a couple of days ago. And then I come back to the end. Uh, international scientific unions and startup bodies are more than welcome to reaching a scientific interdisciplinary consensus on the minimum components to describe nanomaterials, ensuring uniqueness and equivalency. Um, Dr. Dawson talked about normally same nanomaterials, but how do you ensure that there is a uniqueness of nanomaterials by describing it as, as it is, 
but with a time scale and according to the environment, and eventually neutral as regards the equipment which allows you to describe it. And then this is a question of metadata, include, including an, uh, an ICSU code data initiative, which has been supported by the OECD Working Party on Nanotechnology recently, to see how ensuring the interdisciplinarity of data sets and how to have data exchanges according to a same ontology. So this one will be fully open for international cooperation, and I think that Nano Impact Net was a very good beginning, and QNano certainly will deliver the best on that. So I come to an end, and I very much thank you for your attention. <laughs>